a major win for protesters and we can see they're celebrating, but this euphoric feeling likely won't last long once they realise what a mammoth task lies ahead to get the government in order. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's already um, you know, getting very uh, difficult now in terms of the political process. Um, while President Gotabaya Rajapaksa has resigned, the demand of the protesters was the resignation of both President Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe. Now, President Rajapaksa appointed Prime Minister Vikramasinghe two months ago, and it was seen as a deal uh, between these two uh, elite factions to be able to save the Rajapaksas. And the demand was for both of them to resign, but Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe did not resign. And initially, President Rajapaksa appointed uh, Ranil Vikramasinghe as acting president. And now, with his resignation, he automatically becomes acting president. And next week, we are likely to see an election for the president. And the president's party, Rajapaksa's party, might support Ranil Vikramasinghe. So this political uh, drama is continuing with the Rajapaksas very much still in control, even though they themselves may not be the face of the new regime. They will be controlling it from behind the scenes. Well, as you say, protesters have been calling for Ranil Vikramasinghe to resign. Tell us why he's not popular with voters, particularly among the Tamil minority. Uh, Ranil Vikramasinghe was completely defeated in the last elections. In fact, he did not even win his own seat in parliament. His party, which is the grand old party, which was at independence, the ruling party, was reduced to one proportional representation seat. So throughout the country, he's, he has no legitimacy. And him being appointed as prime minister raised a lot of questions about his uh, sort of democratic legitimacy. And neither does he have support in the south of the country, nor among the minorities. He is now all on his own, and he's he only has his own self-interest at stake because he does not even have a political base as such. And he's making this deal with uh, the Rajapaksas to be able to uh, possibly continue uh, the kind of politics that has been there. So. And so what we might see if he is then elected as president by parliament, normally the people elect the president. Now, this is an extreme case where the president has resigned. If he is elected by parliament as president, we might see renewed protests in the country and the political instability might continue. And keep in mind, this is amidst very difficult economic times. Um, and, and the cause for this political crisis itself is the economic crisis. And unless we can have political stability and a leader that people believe in, they won't be able to lead the country out of this crisis. So we are possibly looking at a very difficult few weeks ahead. Mm. Protesters, as you say, don't just want the president and prime minister replaced. They're calling for a complete overhaul of the government. What could this reform look like? Ideally, what should be happening, given that we are in no position to go for elections, given the severity of the economic crisis, that there should be an interim government uh, composed of the opposition in parliament, even if it's a minority government, that takes the reins for the next six months to, say, a year, to be able to bring about that political stability, give people the confidence, and start to address some of the more crucial issues in particular, giving relief to the people. We are also going through a food crisis. So to avoid a famine in the next few months, to provide relief and stimulus to the agricultural sector, that's what ideally should be happening. But what we are seeing in the background is political maneuverings and jockeying for these political actors who have been completely discredited, but to continue their stint in power. So what would it take then to see this change and what time frame until a stable government can be achieved, do you think? It depends on the pressure that is mounted on the parliamentarians, or we might have to go for early elections, which is also going to be difficult because people are in no mind to be thinking about 
new representatives when they can't even uh, afford the next day's meal or afford uh, petrol or diesel for transportation. So we are, we are caught in this uh, dilemma of how soon can we go for elections to be able to create a government with the mandate or to try to find an interim solution with political and economic stability. I think things should become a bit more clear in the next two weeks after parliament decides to elect the next president and uh, the government in power. Now, there's also been demands to abolish the executive presidency. This was brought about four decades ago. The first three decades of the history of our country, we did not have an executive president. It was a, it was a Westminster-style parliamentary government. And a very authoritarian leader, J.R. Jayavarman, brought about this executive presidency so that one individual could have huge amount of powers. And, and, and that has been the bane of our problem. So in another sense, this is an opportunity to abolish that office if enough pressure can be brought on the parliamentarians. But right now, the majority of the parliamentarians are also only thinking about their own interests. And, and, and that is part of the reason why we are unable to move forward. Hailan, this time is really of the essence here. The governor of Sri Lanka's bank has warned the country may shut down if no stable government is formed soon. The economy just can't wait. Could that be a reality very soon? Absolutely. We are looking at something like a tenth of our economy contracting, so like negative 10% GDP growth. So it's, it's going to create havoc for the people. So we need to address these uh, economic concerns as a priority, and particularly in terms of giving uh, relief. But for that, we also need a stable and a credible political leadership. And these changes have only come about because of the protests, and we might have to depend on the large mass of people in our country to again go out on the streets to keep guiding this political process and thereby trying to achieve our economic ends. Ahailan Kadiyagama, thanks so much for providing us with an update. Thank you. Thank you.